Director X has been speaking to, as he calls it, the angry nerd community. And he is really pissed, as he seems to view the angry nerd community as not real men. Real man, eh? You're a man, right? You do man thing. I guess it's strange to actually have somebody stand up for themselves for once, especially people who you seem to think are beneath you. So this is what these guys are doing with themselves. This is the time they have in their life. If you ever had the guts to talk to a girl, you're from goof ting, bro. But I can't just appropriate your culture and rip it to shreds without you shutting up. But I called you a bigot. You're supposed to go away now. These people tell you they're not racist. I've watched a lot of these guys. I, I subscribe to a few of these guys. You would assume if he thought any of them were bigots, he would have, you know, unsubscribed by now. <laughs> but he's not always frothing at the mouth, there are other times where he tries to help you. Just like in his original video, he, he gave me advice on how to get women. Now I do think me and Director X have very different types. I heard you come in late last night, fill up the condom jar if you need a re-up. <laughs> his have far too much class for me. But he did say, whatever you do, don't tell them that you review a young adult TV show. A bit late for that, I don't know if you've noticed, it's public, a few people have watched it. And besides, it'll never become unfunny to me, this guy who looks down upon people reviewing a television show that he made. If you want me to be ashamed of reviewing it, well, you've been making videos and interviews about how you made it, mate. Characters that they got to play with are really unique, everyone gets to be somebody. I mean, they're not the best, your main point was that your characters are people, but you know, they exist. But I suppose we play by different rules, because unlike us, you're, you're one of those real men. Because real men upload these videos. I dialed down the colour saturation to zero and played piano music, that's why it's art. There's nothing more masculine than a man taking a selfie. That well-known masculine trait of Vanity. A typical high tea activity is go lift weights, have a fight, check your eyebrows are on point in the mirror. Do man thing. And he is very upset because when his show released, the first five reviews were really good. 10 out of 10. This is incredible. I mean, we are talking top draw praise. Characters are fleshed out in modern banter and camaraderie adds depth to the characters. Off your face to even consider this about the show. Levels of magnificence. Blend of humor, action, and a touch of heartfelt felt moments make it a classic. It's so over the top, if one of those comments appeared under my videos, I would have assumed it was a scam. Best acting and writing since the legendary Riverdale. Okay, mate, what are you trying to sell me? But the problem came later on when more people watched the show and they started to give their opinions. My show Robin Hood is getting rating bombed, 1.6 out of 10. I mean, it's 1.0 out of 10 now, but who's counting? Although to be fair, episode one did get 1.1, so statistically significant improvement there. Yeah, suddenly not too happy then, and instantly the slurs began to flow. But they're not racist. They're not racist. Now, if I was him, I wouldn't have taken that so personally. It's IMDB, at the end of the day, who cares? No one uses these sites to judge what TV show they're gonna watch. But what it triggered, well, that got worse. And he is very confused about the industry he's in. When faced with a YouTube video with the thumbnail, he won't stop. He's like, no, I won't stop. This is hip hop. We love beef. You're not in hip hop. You're making a TV show. This is entertainment. And the people making videos aren't critics. They're your audience. I sit in my front room, watch TV shows, and if they're bad, I laugh at them. Hip hop may have fights between different singers, but it's probably not a good idea to insult your listeners, which is probably a reason why you're getting bad comments back from the audience. Because when you start insulting people who watch your shows and calling them bigots if they don't like it, when other people watch it and don't like it, you've also insulted them. It doesn't matter how much you love beef. It's far better to put forward why you think what you changed was important to be changed. And I want to remind y'all of why you thought Robin being a woman was a bad thing. Rather than just insulting the people that liked the original story that you appropriated. Why you thought Robin being a woman was a bad thing. Well, why did you think changing the story was a good thing? Why did you feel the need to attack an indigenous people's heritage? I would love to know your reasoning. Now, I don't know why you've decided to take the tactics that you have, whether it's a PR company informing you, or this is just what you do to grift your way through the music industry. Uh, Guy Gisborne showing up, he's Latino. Like, why are we mentioning where he's from? Why does that matter? It either comes across as if you're warning people, or like you're using him as a, a trophy. Hey, look, we got a Latino. Okay, and? Not of this is important, but seemingly it is to you, which is why you mentioned it in the first place. And if this is just how you grift your way through a music industry or even the entertainment industry in Canada, 
it might work with the executives there, it doesn't work with an audience. At least, not a significant enough audience to actually make your show profitable. And as a man, you gotta go have that conversation. That's just how that works. Now, Director X has had a very successful career directing music videos for some of the biggest stars. It's just when it comes to the advertising for Robin Hood, I'm not sure Entertainment Canite Canada is doing the best marketing for him. When they make a video called Everything You Need to Know About Director X, and it's two minutes long. Even the description, Director X has become one of the most iconic music video directors of all time. Here's a two minute video. Like, I'm not saying it's a shallow subject or anything, but I could talk about cheese longer than that. Although given the clips that they did include in two minutes, maybe it's good that they left it there. 2015, his life changed after being struck by a bullet while hosting a party. I mean, that is a horrible experience. Nobody should go through that. I've been to some bad parties, but the entertainment has never driven me to that. Was it like one of the parties from Robin Hood? I need to know. Who drinks barbecue pits? Bouncy castle. But going through such a traumatic experience had an impact on him. He realized there was a problem Problem. I was angry that people got shot at my party, and I was angry at the culture. And he realized he was the cause of it. Our culture that promotes killers and killing. A culture that I help promote. And so obviously after that realization, the content he was creating changed. Mask robbers who rap about their crimes, it's just sexy. Okay, maybe not. If you want to change your culture, maybe making a show about violent criminals isn't the best thing to do. We teethed it to help my mom not to mess around. All right, so let's make our next score even bigger. Especially ones where when they steal something, think they've earned it. Robin, we earned that. It's the principle of the thing. I and mean, that one of the best ways to dispose of their stolen goods is to help other criminals escape justice. Bail fund always needs help. Make it make sense. It really feels like you're sending contradictory messages here. Although, he does have a different action plan. A method that he's implementing across Canada in order to change the world. Inspired to make a change, he founded Operation Prefrontal Cortex. A laudable goal, I think we'll all agree, and one that should be easy to do. You're committing heinous acts of crime. Killers and killing. I don't know how we could possibly deal with that. Shall we increase the punishment so high that no one even dares consider doing the acts in the first place? No. Director X, he's got an alternative view on life. Harnessing the power of mindfulness, meditation to help reduce gun violence. We're gonna change the world by doing absolutely nothing. Literally. Let's all sit in a room and clear our minds of any thought. It'll be easier for some than others. Meditation is how we can reduce the violence, reduce the aggression, heal from the trauma. And together, we can change the world. We're not going to do any actions, we're not going to increase the punishments for the people causing the problems. But what we can do is sit on a floor and have a nice, relaxing rest. Bring meditation into our schools, into our correctional system, into our the police, the firemen. I mean, I'm not sure, mate, but I think you might be on the wrong track here. A man would talk to me. Yo, what's up? Look who I'm with. Although maybe this was an ET Canada problem. As their latest video published today is, after 18 seasons, the show is ending due to a shifting media landscape and the costs of producing a daily entertainment magazine show. Now who knows, maybe they just ran out of money when they were filming it. I mean, the costs of mine are caffeine and steak. I can understand why they can't stay afloat. I mean, they do have 1.21 million subscribers and yet their videos get 585 views. At that point, it really is best to just reassess, maybe start up a Minecraft channel. Although funding obviously isn't something that Robin Hood needs to worry about. From playback about how Director X built his merry band in the first place, we found out at the BAMP Film Festival that funding sources included the Canada Media Fund, Ontario Regional Tax Credits, and Chorus. That would be Chorus that cancelled the Entertainment Tonight Canada program. Maybe we find out why ET Canada was making videos about Direct their ex and Robin Hood in the first place, because it certainly wasn't for the views. Global TV learned that themselves, didn't they, when your trailer, first look trailer, got 62,000 views, and then just two weeks later, they got 2.2 thousand views, immediately followed by 720, and then 473. But let's see how Director X is getting on, maybe we can get his opinion. No, that's fine, he seems to be a, a bit preoccupied at the moment being a man. Maybe we'll come back to him another time. Loads of people were interested in your show at first, and then the moment they saw it, well, everything died. And even the few lenient people who stayed, uh, they saw enough and they were out. They also say that the decision to flip the protagonist to a young woman instead of a man was made during the development process. So it's nice that Director X has such a coherent vision of the art that he wants to create. They won't let anyone else impinge on it. What's that, executive? You want me to change my entire show for a bit of cash? 
Job done, my laddie. At the end of the day is Robin Hood, as you remember Robin Hood and all the different iterations of it. What's that? You want me to appropriate English culture and then actively rip it to shreds for a few dollars? Yeah, I think my personal integrity will stretch that far. Thanks very much. Debuted his first feature film, Superfly. Everybody wants to be great. Everybody wants to be Superfly. And the entire series of Robin Hood has led to some really deranged articles. Like Director X's ambitious series brings a Canadian take to the classic story of wealth and class. And if there's one thing you know about Robin Hood, it's that they're very classy. Fill up the condom jar if you need a re-up. <laughs> Where Robin Hood succeeds is in its soundtrack. Like I said, this show wasn't made for me. And they think that the biggest flaw about Robin Hood is that it just tries to fit too many topics into its shorter episodes. Like sure, it's got social injustice, inequality, wealth, status, corrupt police, technology, absent family members, internal community issues, trauma, and so much more woven into the first three hours alone. And the problem is it just couldn't talk about all of those things in an entertainment show. That doesn't make any sense. Because those things are really entertaining, apparently, in Canada. Get back from a hard day's work, settle down on the sofa, and get ready for an hour of talking about trauma. Oh, you must all be sitting around your TVs, wetting yourself at the hilarity of it. But the core problem is much bigger. From the moment each antagonist appears on screen, they feel cartoonish and saddled with tropes. Dude, this is from a reviewer who was so deluded, they thought you had a great soundtrack. Run this, hood, run this, run this, run this hood. And they're just saying the same things that everybody else is. You know, the ones you had massive problems with. The angry nerd community is very upset. Whether that be hurting their own henchmen or obsessing over the hero, if Sherwood Towers is considered a hero, because they're all rabid criminals who have absolutely no respect for anybody else or their property or basic human decency and morals. But whenever we get a chance, we're going to say something. And we're going to say something real. It's surprising no one rubs their fingers together like Mr. Burns. Excellent. Even the sheriffs are painted as pure evil. This is somebody who likes you. They really want you to be a success. You can tell by the start of the article. They call it an ambitious series. I really need to know, you were incredibly offended when everybody else said this stuff about your show. Are you about this or is it okay because it's written in an actual newspaper? Everything you see is a little flyer than normal. In real life, no one is one thing, and so by failing to develop the bad guys of the show, you miss an opportunity to create meaningful conversations and takeaways. Because you're so obsessed and deluded and not living in reality, none of the points you're trying to make make any sense, because none of this is happening, except in your own face. A little flyer than normal. For now, though, wealth and status aren't the only barriers barring Robin Hood from an audience. That's about as generous as a reviewer as you're going to get, does it put everyone else's comments into focus for you? The entire world isn't arrayed against you. It might be time to take the chip off your shoulder and just smell the roses. Tell us about the show and the way you reimagined uh, the legend of Robin Hood. Absolutely reimagined it. I mean, it's completely original. No one's done it before. Absolutely original Robin Hood with a Y. And I'll be honest, if you made a show about that, it'd be a massive hit. I actually think you'd agree you're a music director. You know why that would be a massive hit. So why didn't you do that? Although to say that this is an original idea, let's face it, it is very similar to Jennifer Lawrence saying she was the first woman to lead an action movie. But maybe it gets better. Who am I to judge? It came to me one day, oh, modern day Robin Hood. Feels like a no-brainer, right? Like, that could just work. Sure. That was a complicated process you went through, wasn't it? Oh yeah, so I was sitting there and I thought, Robin Hood. But like, now and stuff. Oh yeah, we could do this with loads of things. Just take an IP and change the time a bit. What about Star Trek, but in medieval times? Geordi LaForge doing engineering work on his cow. Captain Picard, captain of his horse. And Deanna Troy, who rides around with him and just tells all the town folk they're being overly emotional. It's a no-brainer, it has to work. They develop this new version, but still being very true. Absolutely. If you really enjoy Robin Hood, this is indistinguishable from the classic English folktale. We're very, very nerd level true to the original. A hundred percent. I mean, I've watched all of them and it's like nerd level true. I mean, especially with Robin Hood, he is entirely accurate. Why did you want to explore this story in particular and tell it in this new way? I mean, the world is the world right now, right? Deep words there from director Twitter. Toronto, this is your Chromas episode. This is what you're waiting for. But none of this prevented the story about review bombardment coming down from the heavens. Despite the fact that one of the favoured critics uh, thought there were massive barriers 
for it to get an audience. No, it's okay when the big critics do it. It's, it's, it's just not okay when you don't like the show. It's very much like wine and whiskey. If you don't like it, you're just not cultured enough to. Because despite its criticisms, it's groundbreaking. Yes, it's entirely breaking English heritage right in front of your eyes. And that's a good thing. I mean, Robin Hood is a folktale from an indigenous people, part of their heritage, but you know. They're Canadian, why would they care about that? I mean, I have to admit, I'm not up to date with all the talk of the youth, but I believe what they would say in that situation is yikes. I mean, apparently, Director X is fighting power with the new- Who? Do you really despise the English that much? I mean, are you that prejudiced that you just think all of their heritage must be destroyed? I'm, I'm struggling to see why you thought any of this was a good thing to do. Why you thought it was necessary. Why you thought that changing it and destroying the story was for an updated morality. Because you see, what you have is morality, and then you have evil. Why are the heroes in your show evil? And why did you think that was a good thing to put in your show? Especially when we've already seen what you wanted to change. And I was angry at the culture that promotes killers and killing. A culture that I help promote. Presumably for an updated morality. You seem to be making things worse. Why aren't you showing your heroes to be heroic? Because you do talk about how your story is about the little guy taking on an impossible foe. But in your story, the little guy is the evil person. Your show shouldn't be about evil succeeding. <laughs> and when you're talking about the villains, the article then goes, and now the show itself is up against a pernicious foe. On online haters and trolls. I'd just like to point out that if by online haters and trolls you're talking about people who don't like your show, not only is that the vast majority of people that have watched it, but it also includes the Globe and Mail who tried to give you one of the nicest, most lenient reviews you could possibly have, but it was just so bad they were like, well, even we can't lie that much. We're gonna have to be honest a bit. Wealth and status aren't the only barriers barring Robin Hood from having an audience. It's just online haters and trolls. Can you see why it's difficult to take you seriously? Why it's difficult to form an argument from your position? Most of the points that you made in your video were trying to group people together. Collectivism, it, it's really not good for arguments. It, it doesn't hold up to even basic scrutiny because people are only responsible for what they said. So you can make as many videos that you want and then go, yeah, but look at these over here. It's my, like, mate, those are just different people saying different things. If you've got a problem with them, t tell them about it. If you've got a problem with somebody who's making a channel, it needs to be with regarding to what they said. They're not online haters and trolls, they're just people who watched your show and didn't like it. Like even your most lenient of reviewers. And I am probably one of those people. I'm somebody that likes She-Hulk and Willow. My opinions of shows are inevitably tainted by how much I enjoy making the reviews of them. And I wet myself laughing watching your first episode. It's some of the funniest TV I've seen in a long time. <laughs> The problem is, the comedy came because you didn't realise how insane what you were making was. How that world doesn't exist. How it was a load of rampaging negative stereotypes, which you seem to have a problem with, <laughs> judging by the videos you've made. Just noticed the basketball, I missed that last time. You didn't have a problem sticking him in your own show. Your pop's still out of the country. What, he's gonna let you sublet the couch he's surfing on? But hey, maybe this is just what you do in hip hop. Maybe you love beef so much, I just don't understand and all of your videos are performative. Maybe you're doing the same thing as everyone else. You're just taking content and trying to make entertainment out of it. Trying to make somebody laugh. That all of the I'm offended stuff is actually just fake and put on. Because at this point, that would be your out. Because unless the rest of your series is an absolute banger and just ascends into classic TV by the end of it, I don't know if you've noticed, but your videos aren't exactly endearing the television watching audience to your show. So if I were you, I would probably change my marketing tactics as insulting the audience. It's not original. You're not the first, and it's never worked for anybody. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.